And as one of our male champions says, he says, look, it's like putting on a new pair of glasses and seeing the world very differently. Often it's invisible. We take as given a lot of key assumptions that are part of a narrative of the organisation and we don't challenge them. I could recognise, I guess, having fallen into that trap myself. And I think it's totally understandable. You know, we think merit is a good thing and at some level it is. But when you kind of reduce it down to what it means, it essentially means that we're hiring people who've done these jobs before. So it really means we take a very different lens when we approach great decisions about promotions or bringing people in. And that's just not appropriate in today's world. So if you have a dominant group that looks and talks in a particular way, they're going to describe characteristics of merit, which could exclude a lot of a broader talent pool. We know from all the literature that um, homogeneous teams make worse decisions across all the criteria. It does mean a lot to me that we fix this uh, because it is an excuse for holding women back who have worked just as hard, who are just as capable, uh, but they're a little bit less comfortable for somebody to promote because they're different. If you're only tapping into 50% of the talent pool, it's challenging to believe that you're really going to have the highest level of performance and be the most effective team. If we're not fast on our feet and attracting the best people through our organisations, it's really going to be difficult to stay competitive over time. We need to get to people's hearts and minds and we need to um, really work on those deep stereotypes that actually filter the way that people understand merit and performance and give people the kit to challenge their own assumptions. The key challenge for us is to actually think about merit with a broader lens. Think not about just past experience, but also about future possibility, future potential, because it's that that's really what, uh, what we mean when we're talking about merit. One um, practical way to identify bias and a lack of merit is to always ask the question, if women make up 50% of Australia's population, why am I not seeing 50% of them here in the executive team, on the graduate intake, in the promotion process, the development program? As a result of the actions we've taken on merit, for the first year, we've now achieved gender parity in our recruiting, which in a Consulting business historically has been very hard. We're making steps in the right direction. We practice what we preach. We're out, we therefore interview people differently, we select people differently, and we're really benefiting from a more diverse leadership and workforce as a result. We hired Australia's first female chief pilot, um, and that was a classic example of breaking the merit trap because we got underneath the hood and we took away the basis of you know, hiding behind, you know, inadvertent settings in an organisation that hold people back. There's always been this significant disparity around pay um, and we've proudly moved into a place of gender pay equity um, that justifies a position for uh, women to be not only well paid but to have flexibility in their life. 50-50, if not why not, is such a simple question but it cuts to the heart of what we're trying to change and that is we're trying to reimagine a normal.